coming up next here on Ghana Tonight. This is your election command center. The Electoral Commission of Ghana suspends printing of ballot papers for the Ghana Freedom Party, that secured on course GFP, to nominate a new candidate following the death of their flag bearer. That's the latest coming through right now. And this is coming in. It's a developing story fresh on the plate here on your election command center coming through from the Electoral Commission. This is your election command center. Well, the Electoral Commission has suspended printing of ballot papers for the presidential election slated for December 7. Now, this follows the death of the founder of the Ghana Freedom Party, Madame Ekia Donko. Uh, the Electoral Commission issued a statement. We have details of it. Dennis Poberry, Wadame Esquire is here. It's good to have you. Pleasure being here, Alfred. What's the EC saying? So, we have been waiting for this information from the EC as to what the next line of action is going to be uh, regarding the death of Ekia Donko. Now the statement is here, and it's very clear on what the next line of action is going to be. Mm. The statement clearly states that the Electoral Commission received the news of the demise of Madame Ekwia Donko. They continue to say that while the 1992 Constitution and the Public Elections Regulations 2020 CI 127 are not clear on the processes to follow in the event of the death of a presidential candidate, Article 50, 54 of the 1992 Constitution provides as follows. They go on to quote except of that particular article, which I will show you mm. the entirety of it. But then it also continues to say that the commission has since informed GFP to make arrangements to nominate a new candidate and inform the commission accordingly. So this was a statement that came in. In the meantime, the commission has suspended the printing of the presidential ballot papers, which was near completion. See, near completion. Near They've completion. They've not told us how many of them have been printed. We don't know the fate of those that have been printed already, but that is a conversation for another day. So some of the signed this? Yes, some of the signed this. I see, and, and, and it's, it's a big one that I know you're going to get into as we go on as well, because yeah. if the statement is anything to go by that they, they had almost finished, finished printing, printing the, ballot, the papers. ballot papers, and then this has happened, happened. It essentially means they're going to discard all those ones they've printed. That's a logical inference to make. And then they would wait for whoever wait for becomes candidates. the GFP's new candidate and exactly. start their printing all over again. All over. At whose cost? Well, obviously, it the comes at the cost is expensive, to us. Eh? Very expensive. And they're entitled to it because the law allows them. And this does not just mean um, any law, but it's the constitution that says so. So... Mm -hmm. They made reference to Article 50, 54 of the 1992 Constitution. This is what the provision says. That where at the close of nominations, but before the election, one of the candidates dies, a further period of 10 days shall be allowed for nominations, and where the death occurs at any time within 25 days before the election, the election in that constituency or unit shall be postponed for 21 days. Um, so the provision, this comes from the PNDC, um, law 284, which had to do with parliamentary election. Right. But there's a similar provision that is contained in the constitution based on which, in that one, it doesn't specify whether it has to be constituency elections or national, or, election. or national elections. And that's why the, the, the electoral commission says that they are going what is provided for in the constitution. You rather rely on this yes. than the CI. So with the CI, because in the CI, you would find that they talk about constituency. This is a national election we're talking about, that's a presidential so. election and that. So that essentially is what the Electoral Commission is going to do with respect to that. But of mm. course, there are already um, some matters arising. We have seen some concerns from the camp of the NDC as to what likely would happen in the event that, for instance, if the GFP does not file a candidate. Now, what it means is that, mind you, a mm -hmm. don't call is position number three on the ballot paper. Yes. What it means is that if they do, they do not file a candidate, this number three will be empty. So then what, 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 what would be the most probable uh, situation or option? So what we have seen, the NDC insinuates, and this is coming from the uh, director of elections and IT, he's made a post a while ago, to say that they reject what they call automatic rearrangements. What it means is that there's the likelihood that the EC would suggest that if they do not file a candidate, this number three somehow somewhere should be they filled have. up. I and see. if it has to be filled up, it means that it will affect the, and the various yes, numbers, the numbers below the three. Exactly. 
and those who are below the three, NDC, you know they are number eight, they likely may be affected. So even though the post is not clear yet, but when you look at it and you look at the line of activities that are coming up, you have that suspicion that that is what they have already said in notice that when it gets to that point. But of course, um, we have heard from the GFP, they say they're going to hold a meeting to decide on the way forward. They have not indicated whether or not they will not file a candidate, mm. but the Electoral Commission per the law but her has given there, them the call opportunity. Him one Roman father also. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, it's not as of right for him to ascend to this place yet. Mm. That's why they have to meet to decide as a party right. as to whether he becomes the running mate of the party or not. And if at all, they would even want to contest. partake in this election. But let's see, 2020, when they contested the election, I mean, they, they got a very comfortable place. Out of 12 candidates, they were placed fifth with a total Absolutely. vote of 5,330. That's some 0.04%. That's significant. And, and you know, you cannot discount Epia Donko's influence and impact, especially in the rural communities, as because of her appeal. Yeah. And, uh, you know, being one, a farmer or had, had her own way of communicating to the people and then had to reach communities as well. Exactly. So you can understand why and she I think she comes to the table with her own uniqueness. It's the reason that, I mean, a good number of people like her for who she is. True. And when it comes to political conversations, there are people who particularly look out for her. And for her to be out of the contest now, I mean, if you ask me, her legacy must continue. So mm. definitely, so somebody, should be, that somebody, will, somebody should will, be in that position show up for her. And the thing that she's also the, the founder of the party, I mean, the party should stand. And essentially, more of the bank roller of the party. Yes. That's what we know. She finances the party's you know, activities. So uh, essentially, that's what the EC is doing. But the conversation now is about the ballot papers that have been printed already, the cost involved, what happens. What happens? Yeah. I wanted to flip to the, to the, to the next one. You talked about the constitutional provision um, and, and what, the Article 54. Yes. And th just a quick one on this, because mm -hmm. this is, there, there are timelines to what has to happen next. Well, I see 10 days there. Yes. Right? And then for 25 nomination, days. So if you could just run through that again for us and break it down. Where at the close of nomination, but before election? Mind you, nominations have closed already. Nominations have closed already, and we are at a period that is before the election. Right. And that when one of the candidates dies, yes, that has been confirmed, that Equia Donko is no more, a further 10-day period shall be allowed for nominations. So it means that if the party is notified today, they have 10 days to nominate a new candidate to fill that space. Mm -hmm. Now, where the death occurs at any time within 25 days before election, mm -hmm. we are not even concerned with this because yeah. what we are having to deal with satisfies the first part of it. Right. So our uh, facts squarely will deal with the first half of it. But okay. if it had happened where the death had occurred any time within 25 days before election, then in that case, we would have the election postponed for 21 days. But we are not there yet. We just mm. stick to the topmost part of it. So mm. that's that, it. There's that's also that's... part that talks about where if the candidate had died on the eve of the election, mm -hmm. but like I mentioned, when you come to the CI, Regulation 13, 4, and then Regulation 17, they're about, they talk about matters that have to do with parliamentary election. Right. And that's just to draw the distinction. But sticking to the Constitution, which is generic, what we have here is what would apply. That 10 days for them to do the nomination, and then that's what we are having to deal with now. So, so GFP, you have to replace Equia Donko in the next 10 days. We have 39 days to election day, December 7. Yes. So we're within, within the, the... Yes, we're within the first the, the, half the, of the, it. The first half of it. Yeah. Let's see. And we'll see how the coming days will look like for the Ghana Freedom Party. Certainly. Whether they and we wish them be, the best of luck in the election. Very well indeed. And obviously condolences to them as they do that. But exactly. you, you would remember I could call for a number of things, including all the humor that she brought to our politics in this country. And... My attention was drawn to some of the promises she was making going into this election. She was going to free all the prisoners and free fuel for um, trotro drivers, you know, and, and all of that. That juicy promises, indeed. But let's let's hear from her. Yeah, um, well, 
uh, lady cameraman in the studio was just telling me that um, one of the promises was one year maternity leave. She's interested in that. I mean, everybody has an interest, depending on maybe you probably have been interested in something else. Yeah. But of course, I mean, she's just promising just as much as the other candidates are promising. Also promising. Yeah, so it's promises mm. galore. Indeed. There was one quick one before we go. Yes. yes, so I was basically making the point that so in the next 10 days, they will have to find a replacement for or see they will not contest the election. And that's going to then present that yes. scenario. That, that scenario you... where the NDC is already ready for it. Hmm. But hopefully we don't get there. We'll see. Hopefully we don't get there. We'll see. We'll remain your election command center.